And we are live. It's your favorite insurance agent, Donald Jr. And this is Finlit Live. This is the show where we talk about personal finances. And today is a very interesting topic because we are talking about taxes and the mistakes people make on their taxes. And I know tax season just wrapped up for most people. So it's an interesting timing, but usually during tax season, tax preparers are swamped. So this is the first time I could get somebody on. So really appreciative of her for taking time out. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get lit. All right. So if you are watching the show live, put in the chat hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, put in the chat hashtag replay. Uh, know, I would love to know where you guys are tuning in from. And just know that, hey, if you have any questions, feel free to comment in the chat and I'll put, put them on the, up on the screen. That way our guests can answer whatever questions you have. Without any further ado, I'd like to bring on our guest, Chantel Johnson. Hi. Hey, Chantel, how's it going? Good, good. Good, I appreciate you for taking time out your busy schedule to come on the show. Um, how about you introduce yourself? Where are you from? What are you up to? How long have you been doing taxes? Uh, my name is Chantel Johnson. I am originally from Mississippi, but I am in Texas now. Um, I have been doing taxes on a professional level about uh, four years now, um, doing them period probably up the past 10 years. I am not only a tax preparer, I am an EFIN holder, and I am an annual filing season completed, which means that you can find my information listed on the IRS's website and I can represent my clients before the IRS also. Well, that's awesome. So you mentioned EFIN, that's a word that I know a lot of people aren't familiar with. What exactly is EFIN? And EFIN is an electronic filing identification number. And basically EFIN holders are the people who are able to transmit the returns. So not only can I prepare the returns, I can actually transmit directly to the IRS uh, from my own company. So the IRS, they do, you know, the background check, they do the fingerprints and um, verify us in order to issue that. Awesome. Well, congratulations on that. It sounds like a really big deal because it sounds like not many people have that designation. So that's exciting. And so with that, we're talking about the mistakes people make, the common mistakes people make when it comes to filing their taxes. And you've been around the block a couple of times, so you've seen a lot of people that's done it right, and you've seen a lot of people that's done it wrong. Oh, so wrong. <laughs> and so what are some of the top things that you've seen and top mistakes that people has made when it comes the to The number one reason, the number one thing is people are not completing their W-4 correctly. Um, that particular item, it changed a few years ago, how it looks. And so it's, it can be a bit confusing. So people will go through and they'll put either that they're exempt or that they're claiming two, three, four, five people. And so what happens is there's not enough taxes taken out um, for the amount that they're making. And this especially applies to people who are single, um, who don't have any children to claim to offset the amount that they're not having taken out. So they're not, you know, they basically receive the standard credit from the IRS, but the, the standard deduction, but that's all they get because they don't have anything else to claim. And so that's the number one reason. Nice. So as far as, so when people apply for a job and, you know, they give you the tax form, like it's always kind of confusing. You're like, okay, how many exemptions do I mark? Like, Explain that a little bit because okay. I know people that's transitioned and they're well, like, I don't know how many exemptions to claim. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, if you're a single person, it's always always recommended that you really claim zero or one, you know, if you have any children or something like that. If you have children, maybe you can claim, you know, one or two, but definitely not the full amount that you have because, like I said, you end up not paying enough taxes. And then when tax season comes, you either end up owing or not getting back the return that you think you're going to get back. Um, so the and even if you claim zero exemptions or if you claim one or two exemptions as to what your actual exemption is, do that for half of the year. 
and then around this time of the year, actually going into July, change it up and switch it to zero. That's normally what I recommend to my clients. If they're going to, you know, pick one half of the year to where, you know, you can, you know, claim it, claim exempt or claim a little bit more deductions to where you're getting more of your money back and then pick another half of the year to where, you know, they're taking out the max that they can for you. Oh, wow. I didn't know you could switch it in the middle of the year like that. So. You can change it whenever you want to is your form. All you have to do is fill out the form and turn it into your HR. Oh, that's very interesting. <laughs> and so, so who would be able, like, what's the maximum exemptions that you can have on a W-4? It's based upon like how many people you have, because the way the form is, is set out now is set up to where you, they have you claim one for yourself. Uh, one, if you have a spouse, and then you put in the number of children that you have. So there's really not like a max. It's just it's the taxes are based upon when you actually file your income tax. They're based upon um, what you're claiming. So if you're claiming on your W-4, three or four exemptions, but then when you go to file, you have no kids. <laughs> mm. So you're probably going to end up having to pay that money back and you're going to end up owing the IRS. And I've heard uh, two different schools of thoughts. I heard that if you do claim a lot of exemptions, you actually get to keep the money in because obviously um, you get paid more in your paycheck, right? And then, um, but if you pay too much to the government and they give you a refund, say in April, um, that's basically like lending the government money for free, <laughs> your money that you could have used some somewhere else like what is your take on that have you heard that before yes i've heard people say that before and um it, it really just depends on when you want to pay it you're going to have to pay it at some point so you can pay it up front and you know if you happen to overpay get your money back um like i said typically if you're claiming yourself and if you do have a child if you're claiming the one other you'll be kind of in that safe span it's it really affects, like I said, people who don't have children to claim is when they go to try to claim more than one or two um, for their exemptions. That's when they kind of run into the issue to where they end up owing the IRS because they didn't have quite enough taken out. Now, another thing um, that's recommended, even if you are claiming your exemptions, such as, you know, say it's you and, you know, your spouse and a child and, you know, if your spouse works, you don't need to claim your spouse because they're going to be doing that. You know, theirs is going to count on their own income. So uh, claiming, say if you claim you and your child, uh, if you're a single parent, you can always have them take out an additional amount. So you'll be, you know, they won't take out the full amount that they're going to be taking out. But you can say have them take out another, an additional five or ten dollars to go towards federal tax. And so that'll keep you from running into owing so much. That's awesome. So what are some of the other mistakes that you find people make when it comes to filing their taxes and prepping for their taxes? Um, another mistake that people make um, are small business owners. Uh, I rarely see a small business owner that prepays their quarterly taxes. Mm -hmm. So the IRS allows you to go on their website and you can prepay into your quarterly taxes. So let's say if you're you know, if you make um, a certain amount during tax season and you calculate based upon your tax, um, you know, what your tax liability would be, you calculate what your taxes would be, then you can prepay an amount. And so what happens is, let's say if you make $100,000 towards the end of the year, you know, when you're self-employed, nobody's taking taxes out for you. Right. So, and you can only write off so much. So if you're not prepaying, and again, you don't have any credits or deductions, then you end up having to pay that money back to the IRS. You end up owing. So even if you prepay the IRS, you know, do every quarter, you still if you overpay, you still get that back. Hmm. That's cool. So can you prepay even if you're a sole proprietor, or do you have to be an LLC or S corp to be That's able to? Exactly, the people that want to prepay is are the sole proprietors. Um, LLCs um, typically. If you're a single member LLC, you're going to file that return on your regular 1040. So it's going to be your Schedule C when you're a single member LLC. You don't have to file a business return. You can file that directly. The only way that you wouldn't is if you classify yourself as what's called um, an S-Corp. And you would have to do that the previous tax year 
to let the IRS know that, okay, this year coming up, I want to be taxed this way. And so it's really just a matter of how much you make. With an S-Corp, you want to be making, you know, a significant amount, not just, you know, a $30,000, dollars $50,000 a year. You want to be making, you know, a significant amount to be an S-Corp because then it's beneficial to you. Um, if you have a multi-member LLC, then, of course, you have to issue out the Schedule Ks to your members so that they can file those on their tax return. Now, you definitely want to prepay taxes um, as a business with the multi-member um, LLC. Yeah, that, that way you're not blindsided in April and it's like, wait, what just <laughs> exactly. happened? <laughs> exactly. And speaking of LLC, and this is more, uh, especially in Texas on a local level, a lot of people, you know, I know you see folk post on Facebook, every time any type of money comes out, you always say, oh, get your LLC and get this and get that. And yeah. what happens is you have a ton of people out here helping people get their LLCs, but then they don't tell these people, well, you know, you have to file those franchise taxes, <laughs> you know, every quarter. And then on top of that, if you're actually selling something, you know, you have to get your sales and use tax license and you're supposed your sales and use tax certificate and you have to pay, you know, those taxes monthly. And mm -hmm. so what happens is, you know, they've spent, you know, $300 plus whatever they pay that person on their LLC. And then it's, it's deactivated the next year because you haven't paid your franchise taxes. Wow. So, I mean, in reality, everybody doesn't, everybody who has a sole prop, everybody doesn't need an LLC unless you're ready to pay those additional franchise taxes for having that additional, you know, protection to pass through. And like I said, even with a, a single member LLC, they're still treated as a sole prop. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, you do see a lot of TikToks and YouTube videos, shorts talking about get your LLC, get your LLC. So what Those is the advantage? Are kind of the joke of our tax groups. <laughs> <laughs> right? So what is the advantage of having an LLC versus a sole proprietor? And what do you think is the threshold that you really should consider having an LLC versus being a sole proprietor? Having an LLC is basically... Um, it's limited liability. So it kind of takes the liability off of yourself for your company. So let's say if you have a company where you're, um, I don't know, reselling t-shirts, you may not need an LLC for that because it's not a dollar liability that can fall on you for reselling t-shirts. However, um, if you have a company, let's say, where you have a restaurant or a doctor's office or something, to where somebody could come after you personally for something that happened, you know, in your in the function of your business, you may definitely want to have an LLC. If you plan on expanding, you definitely want to LLC your business. But you have time for that. The moment that you that you say I'm in business, you're automatically in business. You're automatically a sole proprietor. You know, even without a piece of paper, you're a business owner at that point. You know, so that goes for people who are at home braiding or, you know, if you're, you know, selling crafts, you're a business owner at that point. So the LLC is just basically that's an, that's just an additional layer of protection if that applies to the type of company you have. That's awesome. Yeah, that's huge. And there's so many different types of corporations you go form, like S Corp versus C Corp versus um, there's right. so many different avenues, like you could be a nonprofit, and there's so many different avenues you could go as far as corporations are concerned. And so um, I know a lot of people are interested in starting nonprofits out there. Like, it, what is the process to be able to start a nonprofit? You know, I've worked in that space a little bit, but I mean, obviously you're a tax accountant. So like, how do you take a company from being a regular company to a nonprofit? Okay, so that part wouldn't be a, a tax preparer's part. That would be more of, um, you, you know, some most people who start nonprofits, they have a person that specializes in that or um, an attorney. Sometimes they'll have an attorney that does that. So you'll need to have your officers in place. You'll need to have your funding. I come in when it's time to file the tax return. So my biggest thing with my nonprofits that I deal with is to make sure that you are accounting for the money that is coming in. Make sure that you know people know where it's going out because unlike our regular tax returns and our business tax returns, nonprofit tax returns are public. You can literally go to the IRS, put in a nonprofit's name and pull up their tax return. 
So they definitely want to have that information, you know, steady. And most of the time, their tax returns are not difficult. If some have, if they're smaller, most of the time they don't have an employee. Employees, they may just have the president, the vice president, and the secretary. Um, they may have a lot of volunteers, you know, and then they may have uh, specific companies that they donate the funds to. You know, they just want to make sure that they're keeping excellent records. You know, make sure that they're giving people receipts when they do donate to the charities, because those people are filing those receipts, those funds that they're giving you on their tax return. Therefore, you need to make sure that it matches your tax return. Absolutely. And to your point, like the information is public. Like if you go on the IRS website and type in 990N form, and then you'll be able to pull people's nonprofit information, which exactly. is great. And exactly. I've, you can actually search it by name. You can go in and search the charities by name and pull them up and see if they're still active to see if they, they're up to date on their tax returns. You know, a lot of people pick out how to donate to especially smaller charities that way. So if you're a charity, you definitely want to stay on top of filing your tax returns. You definitely want to, you know, set a salary for your for your people, your employees that are employed, you know, a reasonable like a reasonable salary. You definitely can't collect, say, one hundred thousand dollars for the charity and then pay your president ninety thousand dollars. That's it. You know, that's not even feasible. Right. <laughs> that's not feasible. Mm -hmm. You definitely have to have a full account of where the money's going because it's not your money. Absolutely. And if you want to find out something interesting, look up how much the Houston Food Bank brings in on a yearly basis. <laughs> Have you ever looked it up, Chantel? <laughs> no, I've never looked it up, but I can imagine it's in the millions. Yeah, like hundreds of millions. <laughs> like 300 yes. million. <laughs> <laughs> and and they actually have employees, so their tax return would probably be a little, you know, a lot more difficult because uh, they have a lot of volunteers, but they also have full time employees. Yeah, but they do amazing work here in Houston. It seems like everywhere you turn around, there's always a food drive, and it's usually the Houston Food Bank that's funding that it food is. drive. So I'm really impressed with whoever's running that. I have mad respect for you. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. <laughs> So um, back to some of the mistakes that people make, we'll share one more major mistake. And like, what can people do like in July to start prepping for January and February when they start doing their taxes? In July, um, like I stated, it means you receive a paycheck um, at the end of the year, you get a W-2. You definitely want to um, double check your um, your your W-4 to make sure that it's correct. So your W-9. So if it's not um, correct, you can just fill out a new one. If you're not sure what yours is, just fill out a new one to, um, you know, make sure you're taken out. You can actually go, there are certain websites, um, and I don't know them by heart, but you can go and you can calculate how much you need to be paying based on your tax situation. And so then you take that and compare it to your paychecks to make sure that you're having enough coming out. That's awesome. Well, believe it or not, this year is almost halfway done and tax season is going to be right back around upon yes, us. Yes, yes, it's, it's definitely there. And if you haven't filed your back taxes, you still can. Uh, most paid preparers can file you from 2020, 2021, and 2022 up until the IRS closes in October. Awesome. And the reason I actually wanted to bring up the nonprofit side is because you actually do something special for nonprofits. I don't know if you want to share it publicly or if that's something. With can... my nonprofits, um, and there, there are probably a lot of preparers that do this. Uh, when I prepare for a nonprofit, I donate back half of my fee to that nonprofit. So, um, you know, they even though they pay me the full price, they I donate half of the price back to them. That's awesome. I wanted to share that because I thought that was amazing. <laughs> and so if you know any nonprofits that need help with their taxes, preparing their taxes, send them to Chantel. She does a really amazing job. I've heard that she's gone behind other tax preparers and actually found money for that person. Most definitely. Um, tax year 2020 and 2021 were very very unique tax years. And so there are a lot of people that are accustomed to filing taxes themselves or having their cousin do it or, you know, using, you know, online sites to do their taxes. And what happened was the IRS made changes mid-year 2020. 
um, to apply discounts. And so um, special discounts for people with children, special discounts and credits for um, self-employed people. And so there were just certain forms and things that had to be filed and you really could only get it done with a paid preparer at that time. And so there are people who, you know, I'll say at least one, uh, at least one out of every three people that bring me their 2020 and 2021 returns end up getting something back, especially if you're self-employed or if you have children. That's awesome. So if you have any questions for Chantel, free, feel free to type it in the chat and we'll bring it on the screen and have her answer it. Uh, while they're doing that, how can people get a hold of you if they do want to use utilize your services? Um, you can find me on social media, a touch of honey by a touch of honey multi services. Uh, I'm on Instagram um, at touch o honey. My Twitter is at touch o honey, and uh, my phone number is uh, for the business is eight three two three zero four. Zero 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 three. Awesome. Reach oh, out to my website. <laughs> um, my website is touchohoneyms.com. And when she says multi service, she really means multi service. This lady is talented. <laughs> I spent a little bit of time with her and I, I realized how talented she is based on the little time I've known her. Um, I definitely wear a lot of hats. I'm also, um, in addition to being a tax preparer, I'm also a paralegal by trade. Say it again. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. What are some of the other services you offer besides just taxes? Yes, I'm a paralegal by trade. Um, I freelance for a few attorneys. Um, through these attorneys, I prepare um, documents uh, for use for pro se, which means you're representing yourself, uh, especially for divorces. Um, I'm also a notary. I am a registered online notary, which came in handy during COVID because we couldn't go see anyone. And I am a travel agent. Now, to be honest, I became a travel agent because I want to travel more. So that was more so that I can get discounts for myself. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so, well, I appreciate you for taking time out your busy schedule to be on my show. And awesome. look forward to having you on in, in the future. Thank you. Yes. So if you got any value out of today's show, go ahead and smash that like button. If you know anybody that's struggling with their taxes, go ahead and share this video with them, especially if they feel like they didn't get enough money back in 2020 or 2021, um, because there was a lot of special incentives um, during those years. Maybe she could look over it, even if she reviews it and she can't find anything be like, okay, you did good. But if she could find something for you, that's more money in your bank account. So that's the value of tuning into today's show. So share this with your friends and family, see if they can find some value out of this show too. Um, if you are on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube station. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers. We're almost at 500. So we're almost there. I appreciate you guys for tuning in on a weekly basis. Um, with that, I'd like to share um, some of the upcoming events and uh, one of the biggest events that's happening is in September, September 9th at 9 a.m. Central Standard Time is going to be here in Houston. We're doing a six-hour Boost Your Sales Skills workshop. And this is the workshop where it's not just me and my host uh, talking to you guys, but it's going to be an interactive workshop where you're not going to just take the principles we tell you, but you're going to apply it to your specific field and your specific career. And the thing about sales is it doesn't matter if you're in sales or not in sales, because sales is all about communication. It's all about finding a need and solving that need. And we're going to teach you how to communicate effectively with different personality styles. We're going to teach you how to understand why people do what they do. And if you understand why people do that, what they do, A, that's going to make you powerful of yourself, but B, that's going to help you influence other people to make decisions hopefully for the better, use it for good, not for bad, obviously. <laughs> um, so with that, I'd like to share a testimonial of one of the guys that went through my Boost Your Sales Skills workshop last year. His name is Jamal, and he actually had a phenomenal result uh, after he went through my workshop. Hey everyone, my name is Jamal. I'm a senior credit analyst. I'm in credit repair sales. Last October, I attended Darnold's Boost Your Sales workshop. Prior to then, I was averaging about 40 deals a, a month. Uh, any salesman knows that's not too bad, it's pretty good. But last month alone, I closed on 80 deals. 
And a lot of that was due to the fact that I used the techniques that Donald taught me. I mean, for a couple hours, that works out, boosting your skills by double, that's a good deal in, in my book. If I were you, I would attend. I know I'm going to be there. Let's go. So go to the Finlit Live website, www.finlitlive.com, and the link to the Eventbrite is straight on the website. Uh, we are in the early bird special. It ends on August 1st, so take advantage of the early bird special before it goes to the general registration price. So I appreciate you guys for tuning in, and I appreciate you guys for getting lit. Yeah.